Hello, my name is Ryan from Buster Beagle 3D. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna go over two scenarios. Scenario number one is that you have the original Xtool D1 and not the Pro, but you wanna be able to upgrade that machine to use the 40 watt laser. Currently, the 40 watt is only available for the D1 Pro and not intended for the original D1, but we'll fix that. Scenario number two is that you bought the original D1 and then you bought the D1 Pro when that came out. Then you picked up the 40 watt laser upgrade to add to your D1 Pro. Well, can you take all of the parts you took off of your D1 Pro and make your original D1 a Pro machine? Well, let's get started. But first, I want to let you guys know that Exul is coming out with a new 55 watt CO2 machine called the P2. It will be released on April 5th but this one showed up today for me to check out and review it for you guys. I literally just opened it and put it on the table. It isn't even plugged in yet. However, if you are interested before the review, there is a special early bird pricing where you can save up to $1,000 by putting down a refundable $100 deposit by April 4th. Details in the video description. Now, back to this video. Okay, so right off the bat, I want to talk about why you might want to do this and why you might not want to do this. First, I'll talk about upgrading your original D1 to the 40 watt machine. Perhaps you want to be able to have limit switches so you can use absolute coordinates with your machine. If you've been watching any of my videos, you know that I'm a fan of absolute coordinates, so that's a big plus for me. And if you want to have the most powerful cutting diode laser that Xtool currently has, then this would be a reason for the upgrade. Now why you may not want to do this. Once you convert your original D1 machine over to the 40 watt module, this means you will no longer be able to use your original laser module from the D1. The motherboard, wire setup, gantry connection, and power supply are all different. This means that you would have to undo the conversion back if you ever wanted to use the original laser again. On mine, for instance, I have a 10 watt laser on the original D1 that is better for detailed engraving than this new 40 watt, so just keep that in mind if you're deciding to make the change. I, however, will be taking the original D1 parts and will be looking into making a dedicated tumbler engraver from the parts that are left over, so it's really not going to go to waste. Next, I wanted to talk about why you might want to upgrade your original D1 to a Pro machine after upgrading a different Pro machine to the 40 watt. Well, I had a D1 Pro that had a 20 watt laser on it before I upgraded it to a 40 watt, but that means I can only have one machine running a 20 watt or 40 watt at one time. Well, I wanna be able to run my 40 watt and my 20 watt machine at the same time, so that's why I'll be upgrading my original D1 to a Pro machine so I can run two Pro machines at the same time. Again, I can use leftover original D1 parts for my dedicated tumbler machine in a future video sometime. All right, so let's start with the original D1 to 40 watt kit upgrade. Now, the only real difference between the frame of the original D1 and the Pro version is the threaded holes for the limit switches and limit switch tabs. So my original plan was to figure out where I needed to add the holes for the limit switches and drill and tap them. While this is certainly possible, it's really more work than the average person is going to want to take on, and even I broke my, my drill tap while attempting it. I figured if anyone is going to want to do this, I needed to make it easier, so I designed some 3D printed parts that will bolt right onto the frame and hold all of the necessary components for the upgrade. There is also one extra part that you will have to get, and that is the wire that attaches from the gantry limit switch to the one on the Y axis. This is a little JST MX 1.25 4 pin male to male wire that will attach those two ports. Also notice that the four pin wires inverse the wire position. As you can see here, the terminal on one side is face up and the terminal on the other side is face down. The only other part that you may need is two M3 by four millimeter button head screws. I will make a little kit available that will give you all of these extra parts if you're interested in that and you can find it in the video description below. Okay, to recap what you need for this upgrade. 
the original Xtool D1, the 40 watt laser module upgrade kit, 3D printed parts, two M3 by four button head screws, one MX 1.25 millimeter four pin male to male wire around 70 millimeters long. So the first thing I did was remove the laser head, wiring, and x-axis gantry from the original D1. I then took this 3D printed part and removed the bottom screw that is holding the belt attachment on the left side y-axis roller on the frame. I then placed the 3D printed part with the tab sticking to the back, hugging the bracket. I then put the screw back in through the tapered hole, making sure not to over tighten as to not break the plastic part. I then took the limit sensor that came in the 40 watt kit and screwed it onto the bracket using two M3 by four button head bolts. Again, be sure not to over tighten as the bolts will self thread onto the plastic. Next, I needed to add a bracket for the sensor to read on the back of the machine. I wanted to also mention at this point that I'm not installing the front sensor bracket that is really only used for an alarm on the machine if the laser is going out of bounds. I actually turned those alarms off on my pro version of the machine. Uh, they're not needed for homing, so I'm not worried about installing them. Take the back limit bracket that looks like this and install it by sliding it onto the 3D printed part. Then turn the machine over and remove the rubber cover over the foot of the back left leg. Uh, you will see a screw inside of the foot. Remove it to remove the foot from the frame. Now place the bracket as shown where the metal tab will be facing up towards the inside of the machine. Screw the foot back on and replace the rubber cap. When you flip it back over, you should be able to see that tab glide right between the limit sensor without hitting it. Because this leg is now slightly taller than the other three feet, we're gonna add these little spacers between the other three legs. Just unscrew them, put on the 3D printed spacer, and screw them back in. Now everything should be flush again. The next thing we wanted to do is replace the D1 motherboard with the one that comes in the 40 watt kit. First, we need to remove the rod controlling the Y axis by unscrewing the coupler on the Y axis stepper motor. Slide the coupler off and remove the rod. This gives us better access to the motherboard. Remove the four bolts holding the motherboard on. Slide it out, but be careful, you will need to detach the Wi-Fi antenna on the other side of the board. Detach that wire by pulling straight up on the clip. You can see the difference between the original D1 on the bottom and the new 40 watt control board on the top. Install the 40 watt board in exactly the reverse of how you took off the old one. Be sure to pop the Wi-Fi antenna back on the top of the board before bolting the board back in. After that, place the Y-axis rod back in and move the coupler over the motor. Do not tighten it yet as we will need to make sure both sides of the gantry are flush before we do so. Now install the wire that you took off of the old motherboard leading to the Y-axis motor. On mine, it was a yellow connection that now goes into this white port and not the yellow port on the board. Connect the other end to the Y-axis stepper motor. Turn the machine upright and move the Y-axis brackets all the way to the back until they are touching the frame and then tighten the coupler on the Y-axis motor. Now install the gantry of the 40 watt laser onto the Y-axis brackets. Be sure not to over tighten the long middle screw on the left side as it is for belt tightening and you want to make sure you don't overdo it and damage the belt or the motor. Plug in the wires to the motherboard following the colors and then use some cable ties to make sure everything is secured. On the original D1 there are only two holes to secure these wires so you might want to look into a drag chain or some other form of wire management to keep everything out of the way. Now attach the limit sensor wire from the x-axis sensor to the y-axis sensor. Again, this is a wire that you will not have unless you buy either one with my kit or one on your own somewhere else. It's not part of the original D1 or the 40 watt upgrade. Now install the 40 watt laser module onto the gantry and secure it with the screw on the left. Flip up the metal tab on the back and plug in the two terminals. The last thing that you have to do is to make sure that you're using the proper power brick for the machine. 
the 40 watt has a much larger and more powerful power brick, so you want to make sure you are using the proper one. Plug in the correct power brick and you're ready to go. That's it. You now have an original D1 with a 40 watt laser module that can home using limit switches and use absolute coordinates. To upgrade a D1 from a D1 Pro that, that is also being upgraded to a 40 watt laser, you follow the exact same steps. Instead of using the parts from the 40 watt laser, you're just taking the parts you took off to install that 40 watt laser onto a current Pro machine and adding all of those parts onto the original D1 as well. After following these steps, I went from having an original D1 10 watt and a D1 Pro 20 watt to having two D1 Pros, one 20 watt and one 40 watt that I can now use at the same time. I hope that all made sense. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will make the 3D printed part, screws, and wire kits available on my website that you can see in the description below. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to see if I ever do anything with my extra 10 watt laser now that I have all the extra parts. Also, stay tuned for that review coming up on Xtool's new P2 CO2 machine. And again, you can save up to $1,000 by paying an early deposit before April 4th, and those deposits are fully refundable if you change your mind. Thanks again, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.